Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today for this webinar on the spinal muscular atrophy amino acid diet. We're joined by the lovely Dr. Graham O'Connor. Graham, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much. Kelly. Yeah, my name is Graham O'Connor. I'm the, the research lead for dietetics at Great Ormond Street. Um, yeah, I was very lucky to, to lead on this project today. Um, and for him, diet has always been a, a huge feature of management of my condition. Um, so, Graham, I'm just going to hand this over to you. Lovely. And Lorraine, and she's just your research. Lovely. I will share my screen. Thanks, Michaela. Great. Well, hopefully, you can see that screen, Michaela, and I'll, I'll get started. Um, yes, so my name is Graham O'Connor. I'm the research lead for dietetics at Great Orby Street. And today's presentation is looking at spinal muscular atrophy with a particular focus on the amino acid diet. Um, this has probably been one of the most rewarding studies I've actually worked on for a couple of reasons. One, that this project has been driven by families with SMA or living with F SMA F F2T. This amino, amino acid diet was really popular in the, in the States. And it's obviously filtered through across to Europe and that we didn't have any research to, to really promote the, the, the diet. So it was lovely to be able to, to bring this together, working very closely with children, with SMA and their families. Um, so from that, I will get started. So just to some background to the SMA, so improvements in both the standards of care and the advent of new therapeutic approaches have resulted in improvements in the survival and functional ability of children um, and adults with um, SMA. So far, most of the attention has been focused on survival and the motor and respiratory outcomes. However, the neurological changes associated with SMA can also result in progressive swallowing, feeding and gastrointestinal complications. So despite feeding being one of the most important aspects of care for SMA, less has been reported about the possible impact of nutrition in the management of children with SMA. That's why it's really important to get that research out there. So the current dietetic recommendations for children with SME is really based on an individual focus. So depending on what their, their symptoms may be, we will change their diet based on that. So it may be a high energy formula or a low energy formula. We may modify the fats or the proteins um, just to optimize that absorption. The increasing number of families of SMA children are incorporating the specialized formula where they use proteins that are broken down to a smaller protein called amino acids, which are believed to be better absorbed, particularly in children with SMA, where the neurological part of the disease affects the gut and the gut can't work as well, called peristalsis, and it can make the food delivery through the gut very, very slow. So this amino acid diet originated from North America um, and it was started by a, a parent over there hoping to improve some of these symptoms um, in, in her, her own child. The diet has grown in popularity over the last few years following feedback from parents saying that they had noticed a difference with implementing this new amino acid diet. And then this really grew because of the social media outlets. Um, and there's a whole Facebook group um, that, that's dedicated to this actual diet. Some of the key characteristics to the diet include a very high carbohydrate. So normal carbohydrate intake for um, healthy adults and for children and adults is about 60% carbohydrate. This spinal muscular age feed diet is specifically aiming at 85 to 90 percent carbohydrate. And the rationale behind that is that with the um, with, with SMA, the muscle mass can reduce. So by giving it more carbohydrate just gives it the more more fuel to work with. Um, but because you're increasing the carbohydrate, then you have to reduce the fat. But then the low fats are supposed to help with the gastric emptying. They also increase probiotics into the diet. Um, this is due to antibiotic recolonization because of the ongoing antibiotics that the, the children might be on. And they have lots of other different components added, including vitamin D, um, Q enzyme, um, and also oral hydration solutions just to get the sodium and potassium in. But unfortunately, we don't have any evidence to support this. So it's difficult for NHS clinicians to to endorse or prescribe this, this diet at the moment. That's why we wanted to do the research. Um, we worked really closely with families that, that had children with SMA um, and also adults with SMA to, to try to negotiate and compromise the adult version to a, a UK version that was healthy and well healthier and more unsafe because the, the carbohydrate levels were so low, low so high we couldn't actually endorse them um, for, from a dietetic point of view. So the study design was we children that we had um, <clears throat> recruited through our um, 
the Great Ormond Street Hospital that came to our outpatient um, SMA clinic. And we would switch them onto this neocastinia, which is an amino acid formula that also had pre and probiotics added to this feed. Um, prebiotics are a special type of fiber and probiotics are a special type of bacteria, particular, particular Lactobacillus and Bifidobacter, which are really good for feeding um, the good bacteria in the, in the gut. So they would start on this neocate senior and then after two weeks on neocate senior, we would then add some extra carbohydrate into the feed just to try to emulate that American version of that amino acid diet. We wouldn't go up to as high as 90%, though we would probably aim about 65%. And then week four, we would telephone the family to see how their symptoms were going. And then again, week six, we telephone the, the families. Then at week eight, that would be the end of the trial, and they would then go back on to their trial formula that, that they had before. So that was the, the very simple pilot study that we were looking at, and this is the design study here. So the primary outcome measure we were looking at was just feed tolerance, and this was just measured by those telephone consultations, and we were mainly looking at reflux, vomiting, and the stool consistency and frequency, so any diarrhea or constipation that they might have had on the new feed, and how different it was from the feed before. So the parents were just simply asked to score the, these four symptoms based on had it improved, was there no change, or was it actually worse going on with this new formula? So other outcome measures that we were looking at was looking at the weight. So over that eight week period, did they gain weight as expected? We also looked at all secretion volumes and frequency. And we also looked at energy requirements, which I'll come on to how we actually looked at that in a moment. So here's some of the baseline results for us. A lot of lot of information on this slide here, but I'll just take you through it. Um, the main the mean age of children that were recruited was were about about four years old, um, and then the weight of the average weight was about fourteen point five um, fourteen point eight kilograms. And we've got a set score here, and this tells us a little bit about the the character of that weight based on the gender and the age of the child. And we've got here there were minus zero point seven, so we can see they were a little bit lower than we'd expect the weight would be a little bit lower than, than expected. In terms of ethnicity, we had quite a good mix. So um, we had eight from a white and white British background, one from black, black and black African background, and five from an Asian, Asian British background. Ventilation support, as expected, probably we had only three children were self-ventilated, um, and the majority were on non-invasive ventilation, um, if not overnight, uh, on overnight only which was for 10 patients and then we had one patient that was dependent on um, NIV during the day as well. So this is how we measured energy requirements which is called indirect calorimetry. It's a very clever machine that measures the oxygen and CO2 that's expired um, and then from that we can calculate energy requirements. Now what we were able to do with this machine we can compare it to what we actually use in practice to how we have predictive energy um, equations that we use. So we've got the base, um, we've got the Schofield equation and we've also got the Italian predictive energy equation, um, energy equation by Simona Bertelli. And what was reassuring was that this machine, which is we can use in research practices, was very similar to our predictive energy equations, which was reassuring for us to know. And interestingly, the, the energy requirements for children with SMA were a little bit lower than what we'd expect for a child that didn't have um, um, SMA, but not, not hugely different. So this is the more interesting results here. So this is reported changes in the symptoms after we changed children onto this amino acid diet, which is this Neocate Sinio. The most commonly reported symptom for children with SMA was constipation. And it was you know, significant. It was really affecting their daily lives and causing pain when the children were going to the toilet and then pain in the, um, in the gut as well in the abdomen area. So 12 of the 14 children were suffering from constipation and 10 of those children were actually on medication. Now after eight weeks on the, the, the trial, all 12 families that, were, that had constipation reported an improvement in their symptoms and actually 10, so 10 children were, were on medication but by the end of the, that eight weeks, 10 or 10 children had either reduced their medication or had actually come off medication with this new formula. And again, for reflux, there was also an improvement. And there was one family who actually, the child's reflux was so bad after every meal when they were 
put down after the, after the feed. The feed would actually come out of their mouths, and that's how bad the reflux was. And then after changing to the neocate cilium, there was a significant improvement. Now, all secretions are a little bit more tricky to measure because all these children were having um, a number of suctions throughout the day, and they were also having the, the physiotherapy, um, also, um, they, they do the, the, the physio type of um, oral secretion, that very in intensive version. Um, but again, six of six families, four, so all 14 families actually had um, high secretions. But at the end of the study, six families reported there was an improvement. And that's what we really want to look into in a bit more detail. So these are just some amendments to the original research plan. So due to the improved gastrointestinal symptoms within one week of starting the AK syndrome, only two families chose to add additional carbohydrates into the diet, which was an, an interesting uh, find that we found for this pilot study. And at the end of the eight week trials, 12 of the 14 families refused to go back onto their original feeding plan because they had, they had so many benefits from going on to the neocate sinio <clears throat> and the two families who did go back onto their original formula reported constipation returned within a couple, within one week and requested to restart neocate sinio so these were really interesting findings for us and um, for this pilot study so some key discussional points constipation was one of our um, key findings that, that was improved. So our pilot study suggested that children with SMA type 1 who are displaying gastrointestinal symptoms, especially when constipation is a key feature, may benefit from an amino acid formula. The research found that 43% of children with SMA type 1 suffer from severe constipation, and this is associated with the neuromuscular pathology in terms of the, the change within the gut and the peristalsis, which is that normal flow of food through the gut. So children with SMA have a significantly higher incidence of constipation when compared to the general population. And neocate senior, which is the amino acid diet, had the most significant impact in children who suffered from constipation and required daily medication to regulate their bowel function. So if they were on medication for constipation, changing it onto neocate senior really did have a profound impact on these families. Now there's a number of reasons why this could be. And we think one of them is to do with gut dysbiosis and gut bacteria. So within the gut, you've got lots of good bacteria. And the problem with children with SMA, they are at risk of respiratory infections. So often they will go on to antibiotics just to stop them from having any respiratory infections. And the problem with antibiotics is they prevent the, ba the bad bacteria, but they also kill the good bacteria in the gut and within the skin and then this can cause problems within the gut so we know that constipation is due to the the neuro disability side of the disease but it's also from this gut gut and um, dysbiosis from the antibiotics Liver complications and SMA. This is a, an, another new finding that we're, um, we're seeing with children because we, the children are doing much better now with these drug, um, these life modifying medications. That we're also seeing that there is some liver related issues with the medication and also with the d disease progression. Now, what's good with the neocate sinio is that it contains something called medium chain triglycerides, and this is a different type of fat to what you'd normally find in other types of formulas. Um, and this type of fat is absorbed really easily and has very little impact with on the liver. Um, and it's something that we're quite interested in looking at in, in the future to see if we can improve um, the liver function with, with this type of feed or to reduce any liver damage that, that might be happening from the medication or from the actual disease progression itself. So advances in SMA type 1 therapy poses new challenges, particularly in relation to the management of gastrointestinal symptoms and liver disorders. Children with SMA type 1 who are displaying gastrointestinal symptoms such as constipation and reflux may benefit from an amino acid formula that is fortified with probiotics. Now, the reason why I think it's important that the probiotics are within the amino acid diet, because we had children that were actually just on a standard amino acid formula and they, 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 they still had constipation, but when we changed them onto neocate sinio, this is when they had improvements within their, their gut function and constipation. So more research into fat metabolism and manip manipulation of the type of fat in children with SMA type one is needed and is a very interesting area for, for dietitians working in this field. Now we're very lucky that we have published this research now. So it's literally just come out this week and it's in um, Nutrition and Clinical Practice, which is a huge um, journal 
that's um, big in America and we all, and also big in the in the UK. And we're hoping, and we're also going to be publishing the results um, within Small Talk, which is published by Nutrition and Dietetics Today. So dietitians across the country will be aware of this research and then we'll be able to make that decision um, whether to actually implement this diet itself. Some next steps that we're looking forward to, um, to as well is looking at blended diets and enteral formulas with real food in them. Um, and there's a product called Complete Pediatric that we've also used in children with SMA who have got um, severe constipation and seem to be doing very well on this type of feed if they've got no allergies because this Complete Pediatric does have whole um, proteins within it um, and it also has meat in it as well it has real chicken within that feed but um, it seems to be helping with constipation we also want to start looking at liver monitoring to keep an eye on um, liver function in children and looking at these microbiomes so these are the good bacteria that live in our gut to see if we can try to manipulate the gut microbiomes to help with the constipation in children with sma and um, that draws me to the end of the presentation. So I'd like to open up to any questions. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Graham. It sounds like it was a really positive trial for mm. those involved, and it was a really comprehensive summary of what I'm sure was a lot of very hard work. Um, so yeah, just a few kind of follow-up questions just to touch on some of what you've talked about. Um, Overall, I suppose the conclusion seems to be quite positive and, and in favour of the benefits of the amino acid diet. Is there any thinking on why the diet is beneficial in the ways that it actually is? You know, we've touched on a little bit of that. Yeah, sure. I mean, it, I mean, I mean, this what's lovely about the study. It really has stemmed from fam from families, and you know, they've been using these amino acid diets for such a long time now, and I think it's just due to the, with the gut's just not working as well because of the that, what we call peristalsis that the movement of food through there so the amino acid diet just helps to optimize that absorption and i think that's why the, the amino acid part is important but another key component is these pre and probiotics that are within this feed just to help we colonize that gut and to help just to move the stores through so i think that's the, the two components and then that's why we're also quite interested in looking at the blended diets um, because it's got lots of fiber within this the formula and helps with the, the gut gut function but i think those are the key components yeah absolutely and certainly you know probiotics is one of the first things we turn to and it definitely helps um yeah. so in terms of i mean the studies now done we've got the evidence published do you feel like now there is enough evidence from your study to recommend it? I mean, the rest of diet for children with type 1 um, or any particular groups of children within the community? Yeah, I really hope so. I mean, the idea, this was just a pilot study. And then the idea we could do a larger validation study. But because the results were so definitive in this pilot study, I think if families wanted to go to the dietitian or to the GP and say, look, we've got this chronic constipation. We can't, it's not improving with medication alone. Can we trial this feed formula? And, you know, even they just did it for a couple of months, say, actually, yeah, we've seen a huge improvement. If there's no improvement, then they can go back and maybe trial the complete paediatric, which has got the blended diet. So uh, I, I think most dietitians want to help families, but we're just restricting because the cost of the amino acid formula is a bit more. But now they can say, actually, look, it does have um, patient benefit. Uh, so hopefully they, they'll be able to, um, to, to use it. And once we get it published in Dietetics Today as well, more dietitians will be aware of it. And they may even approach families with children of SMA and say, look, do you want to give this a try? Yeah, and hopefully that, I know we're, a few families have struggled with that in the past, so hopefully that will actually start turning the tide for them. It'd be great, yeah. And I mean, I suppose then, if it is agreed that the amino acid diet is suitable for a child, what are you able to tell us about the practical side of committing to the AA diet? I mean, looking at, so if most families might be on these ready-to-hang formulas, which is much easier. You, just, you can just connect it straight to the given set for the gastro. So with the near cake, it is a powder. Um, so it's a little bit more work for families to do who probably have quite a lot to do already. So that I think that is the only practical issue. But from a dietitian's point of view, what's good for the powder is that we can change the concentration. So if a child is having problems with volumes, we can actually just increase the concentration, get more energy and protein into a smaller volume. 
Or on the other end of the spectrum, if the, if the child is gaining too much weight, we can actually reduce the concentration to be more suitable for that family. So it's probably easier for the dietitian to manipulate the concentration, but it is a bit more work for the family to have to make the feed up um, each day, which is a really good point, actually, Mikola, because it is um, something I hadn't mentioned before. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, in terms of actually securing um the formulas and stuff like that how how, do, how should that work at the moment securing the the product yes we're securing the 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 formula and the powders themselves um should that be just through an ordinary pharmacy yeah hopefully so the gp will prescribe that still so that, that should come through the normal process and um, it's, it's produced by nutritious so a lot of nutrition do their own homeward feeding program so a lot of families might be with them anyway which makes it easier and they can get that delivery through nutrition for a gp prescription um if they're with a different feed company because they want a different type of formula like say pediasure which is with abbott abbott will often do a delivery for a feed that's not necessarily their, their own or they might have to get delivery from the, from the pharmacy. So there's those three different avenues there, depending on which feed company that, that you're with, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, as well as many of us are using ready to hang. Um, I mean, you know, they have to be stored in a full dry place. Is there any different storage needs for the powders? Um, I think once the tin's opened, um, there's only 400 grams in there. So usually you use the tin up within three days. Uh, so that's well within its seven days limit. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so you'll keep it in a, a cool, dry place as well. Keep the lid on top. Um, and it's, yeah, that's so hopefully in terms of the ready to hang form, it's, it's very similar. And as we're finally on that kind of um, the practical side of things, would you recommend that people wean over or do they just start their original food and move straight into the amino acid foods? Again, again, really good question. So from when we did the research, we actually just went straight into the amino acid formula because in theory, the amino acid formula should be better tolerated. But if some families, you know, some children are so sensitive to a change, the dietitian might recommend doing 50-50 it literally just do half and half um but again i think that as an individual basis but from all the 14 patients that we have we went straight into the amino acid formula because i think we just knew it'd be better tolerated in terms of the way, the way it's broken down yeah absolutely um so i mean your the research that you've done included children who have type 1 sma and whose mean age was just over four years of age um so do your findings have any implications for older children or adults or people with other types of SMA as well? I hope so. I mean, you know, this is a fundamental basis of a, of a project to show that if it's the prebiotics, the amino acid is going to help someone with constipation when we know the gut's not working as well. So there's no reason why this can't be translated into an, an adult population. Um, the formulas are slightly different though. So for an adult feed, so the, you, you've got, it's called Elemental 028, it's one of the, um, one of the formulas we've got near Cape Junior, but they don't have the, the probiotics in them. So they might have to mix them in with a separate probiotic. Um, I believe Nutritia are working on their um, new, near Cape Junior Sinio, which then has the prebiotics in there. So I think that's going to be, that will be available soon. But in, that's a bit more complicated for the adults. Unfortunately, there's not that combination available. Yeah, absolutely. So that might just take a little bit more. A bit more yeah, it's to always that. harder for adults, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, it's always a question I see a lot of people asking at the moment. Um, as much as fashion in the adult community is that for those of us on treatments, um, like risk of plan like spinorasa, we are hungrier <laughs> um, right. when we're on treatments. So do you think there is advice there for people who are you know, maybe being told by one person to eat more protein and being told by another to not eat any differently? You know, if you're on treatment, should you respond to that? Or should you just try and keep your diet the way it was? It's it's so true. We we hear this all the time with the new medication. And similarly, the children that are, are on um, on steroids, it does increase their appetite. And it's all the way that we metabolize the glucose within, within the body. So it's a real response. It's a proper hunger response. But it's just because the body's utilizing that, that um, the, the glucose more quickly. 
but it's not that it's been used up it's still being stored the same way as as before so it is it's, it's about just controlling that hunger as best you can um and not eating towards that hunger because it, it is so difficult to do but you're absolutely right it does increase hunger and if you have got reduced activity it doesn't take much for that weight just to, to store itself so it is very difficult um so yeah a ways are, are around avoiding eating as much is just having those the, the lifestyle habits unfortunately if you can do a bit more activity if you wanted to eat more but trying to do a bit more activity if, if possible um but just be mindful that your if it, it is the problem is it is a true hunger it's not like it's you know you're bored you just don't want to eat it's, it's a real hunger that you have to override it's horrible <laughs> there's no easy answer I'm afraid Michaela for that one yeah it was really strange for me the first day I took this to farm I just got I got hit about an hour later with this real extreme hunger yeah um, and the main way I kind of found to combat it is to try and find a mean that will really fill me up for a while yeah that seems to work perfect um, I know different people find different solutions um but it was one of the most unexpected things for me, I think. Yeah, and, and the easy, the behavioural ways around this is to ensure that there's only like healthy foods available within the house. If you are going to snack and you know that there's a particular time that's really difficult and the hunger is really bad, because um, of course if there's food in the cupboard that you want and it's easy to get to, um, but then you want that quality of life as well as so it's a balance, isn't it, really? It is. I think for me, it was a bit trying not to eat all day long because, so I mean, I suppose especially for adults, it is a long time to eat a meal. Um, for some of us, so yes, for me, it was trying to cut that time down. So yeah, that's really good advice to try and right. just find the right foods. Um, to follow up. Yeah. Thank you very much. You, that was a really interesting presentation and discussion. Um, and the findings in the study look absolutely incredible. Was there anything else that you would like to cover before we go? Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much, McKenna. I really appreciate the invite to, to present today to get my research out there. And hopefully, if anyone has any questions to come to you or to SMA UK, um, and they can direct any questions to me, or then if the dietitians have any questions, they can have a chat with me as well. But no, thank you so much for the platform today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And just to reiterate, SMA UK are here to take any of those questions that might arise from today. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to, to Graham or to your own team. Um, and I'm sure one way or another, an answer will be found. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thanks, Michaela. Speak to you soon.